Hello folks, this is Sula speaking. You're listening to another video for League of Legends, and this one features Darius. This game is taken from one of our Tuesday night custom YouTube night events. In this game, I'm going to be playing as Darius. Alongside me is Trowborn playing as Oriana, Wizard Ninja Pro playing as Lee Sin, Iotox, and I hope that that's pronounced right, playing as Ash, and Aelorith playing as Sona. Then on the other team, we are going to have another Darius player. Yes, this is going to be a Darius mirror match with Terrorist Cyst playing as Darius as well, Varus Nox playing as Rengar, Volbast playing as Lux, Usaz or Usaz, I'm afraid I don't know which one, playing as Tristana, and then Ruli Hellion playing as Malzahar. So two Dariuses in this game will be a good example of uh, give us a good example to talk about Darius gameplay in general. We'll be able to look at Darius as a champion, go through some of the strengths and weaknesses of Darius as a champ. And the other thing that I'm going to use this video to do is talk about how the gameplay changes when you get either way ahead or way behind in lane. Because if you have a match like Darius versus Darius in top lane, that lane's going to snowball very hard in one direction or another. Somebody is going to win that matchup and is going to win it very hard. Uh, it's not a lane that's just going to be split evenly and going to be a farm fest. Someone's going to come out on top, and then the lane's going to start to snowball. So that then will change how the lane is played. If you're ahead, you want to play the lane a certain way. You want to play real more aggressively. If you're behind, you also need to play the lane a certain way. You need to play more defensively. So we'll try to go through and talk about that as the game goes on as well. As far as Darius goes, he's a pretty strong champ. He's one of the more popular champs that's in, been introduced in recent months to League of Legends. We have seen him used in competitive play a fair amount. He's a pretty strong champion. He uh, is a lane bully. He's very good at winning most matchups in top lane. He doesn't win every matchup, of course, but he does win a lot of them. He's very good at putting pressure on the other team uh, in top lane. He's one of the champions where if you get ahead, the lane is going to be very miserable for the other side. Uh, again, he doesn't, he's not, you know, invincible by any means. He does have some bad matchups. In particular, some ranged champions give him a lot of trouble. Jace is sort of a good example of a champion that causes all kinds of problems for Darius. But he is a strong choice. He's a good champion to pick if you want someone to try to learn top lane. He does win a lot of matchups in top. And I think he's just a really fun champion to play. I think he's just one of the more entertaining, more fun champions to play right now. Anyway, so in terms of how to look at this lane, I'm going to mention one or two other things first. First of all, our Lee Sin player, Wizard Ninja Pro, he began blue, and then he continued jungling from there. That's a, a little bit of an unusual path. Usually Lee Sin start at red and then go to blue. Meanwhile, on the other side, Varus Nox, their Rengar, has started blue, and now he's going to look to go to red and then head towards top lane. I point this out just because uh, the jungle pass of our two junglers, uh, our Lee Sin's path is going to take him down towards bottom lane. Their Rengar's path is going to take him towards top lane. Uh, and I had this in mind while playing. I was sort of expecting that Varus Nox was going to try to come up the top lane and try to gank me at either... I thought he would probably gank me at level 2, actually. I thought he might just start red and come gank me at level 2. So I'm actually playing back. I'm playing a little bit more defensively. I'm uh, trying to stay back because I'm expecting that I'm going to be ganked. And this is going to allow Terrasis to uh, out-level me early on because he's going to be killing more minions than I am, and that means he's going to be getting a little bit more experience here. So that's one reason why he's pulling ahead a little bit. But there is a rationale for that. Like I said, I was expecting Rengar to come top and to try to gank me, and I was expecting the jungler to come and try to kill me first just because that's what I would do if I were jungling Rengar on the other side. I would expect an early gank in top lane. And as it turns out, like I said, Terra Assist is going to hit level 3 before me. I'm still level 2. That's a pretty big advantage early on. Those early levels uh, make a big difference. But there we go. Now I'm level 3. And this is more or less where I want to be. Note that I'm further back. I'm in a relatively safe position. Uh, I'm in a safer position than I would have been if I was up. Still, right there, Terra Assist is going to pull me in. There is that red buff on Varus Nox slowing me, so I'm going to have to burn Flash, unfortunately, in order to get out of that situation. So, uh, I avoid dying to that gank, but I did have to burn Flash, so not the greatest situation in the world. And meanwhile, fortunately, our bottom lane is pulling ahead right there. Okay, so, some of Darius's abilities. I do want to talk about some of the abilities right there. I'm going to get pulled by Terror Assist. He's going to take a tower shot in return, but he does get the pull off. So Darius abilities, we'll go through, go ahead and talk about them. While this, oh, well, never mind, we'll get them in a minute. Right here, though, I'm going to get uh, the pull in on Terror Assist. I know that Lee Sin, Wizard Ninja Pro, is coming up here. I'm going to get ignited right here. I'm going to back out of the fight. I don't want to die. I don't want to give up first blood. 
Wizard Ninja Pro can take that kill on his own. He doesn't need my help to get that kill. So I'm just going to back out of there. No need for me to get the kill. It's fine if uh, Wizard Ninja gets the kill himself. So just going to back out there. Leave it to him. Now, I do make one mistake here, though. One thing I really should have done is note the minion wave right here. See how the minion wave is pushing out towards their tower? It's pushing towards Terrace's tower. This is not a good situation. I should have killed the creep wave and shoved my wave into their tower. Because watch what's going to happen here. This creep wave is going to come here and it's going to get frozen right around this spot and this is a bad place for the creep wave to get frozen uh, I don't want the creep wave to be here because it's going to allow Terrasis to come up and farm the minion wave he's not going to miss anything in terms of minions and uh, just take my word for it that was not the best way to manage this creep wave I was worried I might die but it, it would have been worth the risk to just shove the creep wave forward into their tower because now look at this he's not going to miss any minion kills from dying or very few and now he can just sit here and farm this wave in safety and this is pretty much what he wants. This is how he wants to manage the wave. Okay, so a little bit more about the skills. Haven't really talked about them. Again, Darius is passive. Very important. Watch as I get grabbed under the tower foolishly and end up losing about half my life to two tower shots. Darius is passive. Hemorrhage attacks and damaging abilities cause enemies to bleed over time. Stacks up to five times. So this is a, this is a very important part of his kit. Anytime you do a physical attack or use an ability, Enemies get a, gain a bleed stack and stack up to five times. Deals quite a bit of damage, magic damage over time. So you want to make sure that you get those extra stacks. And like I said, it is quite significant. Okay, Darius' bread and butter skill, his Q called Decimate, deals physical damage nearby his enemies in a circle. Champions in the outer half take extra damage because they're struck by the blade. They take 50% extra damage. So if somebody's right next to you, they take a little bit less damage. Again, this is the skill you see Darius mo use most often. It's the skill he maxes first. Just spins in a circle with his axe, deals damage. It's on a relatively low cooldown. Doesn't cost much mana. At 40 mana, it's almost a ridiculously low cost, actually, for this skill. So use it often it's your best you know it's pretty much your best skill feel free to use this one and use it a lot uh, you do have to get some practice with the range you'll note that I miss I mean, whiff a fair amount of the time because I don't know the range as well as I should uh, like I said just one of those things that takes practice uh, use it for last hitting use it for harassing all that stuff is good now right here watch Veristox is coming in for a nice gank I'm going to get pulled in by Terra Assist and watch Terra Assist has just hit level 6 and he's going to be able to get off the execute with his ultimate. Going to be able to get off the dunk. So that was a perfectly timed, perfectly timed gank by Varus Knox coming in right when Terra Assist hit 6. Remember, I do not have flash up because I had to flash out earlier. So I was not able to flash away to escape that. If I had been level 6, I could have turned around. I could have ignited and ulted Terra Assist and he would have died. We would have at least gone 1 for 1. Instead, he's able to keep farming that creep wave. And look, this is a terrible time for me to die. A full, this is about two, almost two full waves is going to hit the tower. I won't be able to farm them, and I won't be able to get the gold or experience here. So the, the gank from Varus Nox is now snowballed Terra Assist very far ahead in this lane. Again, a lot of that goes back to the poor management of the creep wave before when I should have shoved into the tower earlier. I did not do so. Really would have helped me out because, again, the, the net effect of that was Terrasis did not get denied experience. He hit level 6 first as a result of that. And so along with that gank, he was able to kill me, and he is now very far ahead in the lane. I mean very far ahead in that lane. All right, so I mentioned the Q. This is Decimate. Like I said, this is the skill you want to max first. Next skill, W, Crippling Strike. Again, next basic attack deals extra damage and slows the target's movement and attack speed for two seconds. Um, this is also a skill that serves as an auto attack reset. So you can auto attack and then immediately attack again with W. And you want to make sure to do that when you're using Darius. Attack, then immediately hit W to attack again. Again, pretty standard skill. Uh, deals extra damage, slows attack speed, slows movement speed. Nothing too complicated on this skill. Usually you want to almost certainly max this second after Q. Then E, I've been talking about Darius's pull. This is his apprehend. Gives him a passive armor penetration. He doesn't don't, I don't think the skill really needs the passive armor pen, but you do get it. More importantly, the active pulls in all enemies in front of Darius. The range is relatively short, and it does have a long cooldown. It's a fairly long cooldown. 23, what about 23, 24 seconds? Pretty long cooldown. So this is a very important skill. This is pretty much the skill that separates good Darius players from bad Darius players. The ability to use the pull and use it effectively. So again, make sure that you use this wisely because it goes on a very long cooldown. But it's a great skill when you use it correctly. And then the ultimate is his execute. Deals true damage. We'll look more at this in a minute, but watch. I'm going to misplay this situation here. I get pulled by Terra Assist. There is his W. There is another Q. And then he gets off the execute. And along with Ignite and those bleed stacks, 
I'm going to get finished off. And again, this is the power of Darius. If he gets ahead in a lane, you are in trouble because he will start to snowball that lane and you are going to fall further and further behind. Note how far behind I'm getting in minion kills right now. So again, all he needs to do is land he, land a Q, auto attack, land an E, pull, auto attack, W, auto attack, uh, pull, pull off W for the auto attack reset, and then alt, and I'm dead. And once again, a, just a terrible, terrible time to die. Two full waves hitting the tower. I'm not able to farm them. I do not get gold. I do not get experience for either of these waves. And like I said, when you die is hugely important. I've died at two terrible, terrible times, both times missing out on giant waves of golden experience. This is what you want to avoid in top lane, and Terra Assist played it very, very well, both times shoving the minion wave up into my tower, both times being able to uh, deny me gold and experience. So again, I'm 30 minion kills behind, not because I farmed badly, I could have farmed better, but largely because when I died, I missed out on about... I missed out on about 10, I'd say I missed out on about 12 minions each time I died, and that makes up most of the deficit right there. So anyway, now I'm behind. Now I'm in all kinds of trouble, and my ultimate's not going to be that useful when I'm this far behind. Again, Noxian Guillotine, I think most people are familiar with this skill, but leaps the target champion, strikes a lethal bro, deals true damage. For each stack, you deal extra damage, so you want to try to use this when they have the five stacks of your passive. And, of course, the cooldown is refreshed if the guillotine kills the target. So, yes, you can dunk people over and over again if you get it off correctly. Now, there is a fight in bottom lane, but we're going to watch this fight here. Again, I'm getting caught out by Terrasis, but he's going to make a mistake. Watch. I'm going to pull him in under the tower. I'm going to ignite. I'm going to use my ultimate. And is this going to be enough to kill him? No, not quite, but he goes back in for some reason, and I am going to be able to get the kill right there. Terrasis, it looks like he was trying to ult me, but he didn't get his ult off, I don't think. So, I actually am able to get that kill, and that is a huge mistake when with him being that far ahead he really should not have died there again made the mistake got pulled under the tower was able to give me one kill back again right there i'm going to use w for the auto attack reset so that that helps out a lot actually to get back that gold i'm still very far behind in this lane note that he's basically up a phage on me in lane and wow that's really tough to be down a full phage on somebody but i'm not as far behind as i would have been before Right there, ALRF picks up a Sona kill down in bottom lane. I note, note that I haven't been paying as much attention to other lanes. That's just because I want to focus on this matchup and really talk about a little bit of the mechanics of playing in top lane and keep focusing on this matchup here. Anyway, I've gone ahead and grabbed the Ruby Crystal. I'm going towards a Phage as well. This is pretty much the basic Darius build. Double gold, double Doran's Blades. You want those Doran's Blades to stack up the extra damage, give you a little bit of lifesteal in the early game. Fortunately, the rest of our team makes a nice play and is able to grab that uh, dragon right there. I don't know what, what they're doing right here. This is a very unsafe place to be. Here goes Varus has popped his ult. Let's just see what's going to happen here. Is he going to be able to jump on Wizard Ninja Pro? And right there, oh, is he going to be able to finish this one off? Yes, yes he is. Now, Trialborn in all kinds of trouble will get bursted down as well. Is the rest of the team going to be able to disengage from this fight? I don't know. Ash has no mana. That's not a good sign. And I don't think she's going to be able to get out. Come on, Ayatox. No, not going to be able to escape. Aelorif also in trouble. And that's four kills. And yeah, just should stuck around Dragon a little bit too long. Should not have hand, uh, should not really have been in that position. Just needed to get out after doing Dragon. Instead, enemy team picks off four kills. And... Yeah, they're, they're doing pretty well. Now, the lead's not as much as you might think. They're ahead 10 to 5. You'd think they'd be way ahead, but they're only ahead 1,000 gold, and that's because we were able to take that dragon, and because we are actually a little bit ahead in terms of farm in most lanes. The big exception, of course, being here in top lane. Anyway, the one thing that's helping me out is I do have the ninja tab I, the extra armor, and that's giving me a little bit of an advantage over Terra Assist, but sooner or later he's going to start stacking armor as well, and then my day's really going to be miserable. So I have to be really careful here. Again, I, I have to be careful. Fortunately, that pull misses. I very well might have died if that had hit, and uh, Terra Assist had just used his full combo. So anyway, I'm going to head down here. Wait, what was I doing there? I think I was just checking the brush to see if anyone was in the area. But this is a dangerous matchup. I have to play very defensively in this matchup right now. I have to try to stay away. I'm just looking to farm. I want to avoid engaging as much as possible because I'm so far behind in this lane. Uh, it's worth it to lose a few minion kills if I can avoid getting engaged upon. The danger will be when that pull comes back up again. Indeed, it is back up again. So again, idea is this lane is pushing out. I just want to avoid fighting. I want to avoid getting caught in an engage. I just want to play defensively. This is probably too aggressive coming forward to get that last hit. Uh, like I said, the lane... Actually, no, it's not pushing out. It's actually pushing back towards his tower right now. So again, just trying to 
avoid getting caught and killed. And indeed, here comes Varus Nox again, so this is going to be trouble. Note that Varus' ultimate has cooled down. This was before the most recent round of Rengar's nerf, so here he is, comes in stealth. Again, I would win this battle 1v1 against Terrasis, but it's not 1v1. And that means I'm going to die. And watch, Terrorist is just barely going to survive this. Makes it out with, what, about 160 HP? Again, I would have won that fight. I was winning the 1v1. Despite being behind in items, Terrorist had misplayed that lane. And I would have won that fight 1v1. But unfortunately, nope, Varus Nox was there. And again, Rengar, ultimate, just runs in stealth. Not a whole lot I can do about that. Once again, going to deny more minion kills on the tower. Going to deny another wave. And the tower is going to go down as well. So I've really gotten wrecked by these Rengar ganks. Again, the initial kill was great when Wizard Ninja Pro came up the top lane. But really haven't seen him much since then. That's fine as long as he's making plays elsewhere on the map, which he has. He did manage to go ahead and secure Dragon for us. But um, I couldn't win the lane with that extra pressure. A nice jump to the ward right there. Nice ward dodge. Uh, but now I'm really behind. Once again, denied more minions. Denial down, what, 35 minion kills? And now down also a couple kills. And this is the really bad news. The giant spell coming out from Terra Assist. Although he's running back to Fountain for some reason. Not sure why that is. Uh, now he's got the extra health on me. Uh, I finally do have the Phage, but now I'm behind the giant spell as well. Although for some reason he still doesn't have Tabai or boots too, not really sure why that is. Anyway, that's really bad because the extra health is, uh, building health works pretty well against Darius because of the fact that his ult's on true damage, in the same way that building health is useful against, uh, same way that building health is useful against someone like Cho'Gath and his true damage feast. Anyway, once again, I'm getting ganked. I see them coming in here, so I'm like, oh, this is not good. I gotta get out of here. So once again, three people coming top. Um, sad that the other enemy team seems to hate me so much. So anyway, I've gotta get off and running here. Uh, here comes Malzahar down here. So am I gonna be able to make it out of here? Let's see. I do have flash up, so that's a good sign. Maul's gonna ult me. Varus is going to jump on me. Uh, he is gonna ult once again on me. I'm gonna flash over the wall. And are they going to be able to jump here after me? Oh, oh, so close to getting out to safety. Oriana, give, give me that shield. And it looks like I'm going to make it out. Maybe, yes, the Oriana utility. So, yes, actually am able to run out of that. Meanwhile, our bottom lane is doing a nice job. Looks like Lee Sin heading down here to gank. And we are actually going to score a double kill there. So, uh, enemy team sending three top to deal with me. Going to allow uh, the rest of our team to make plays elsewhere on the map. And again, that's kind of what you have to do. This is a situation where they were focusing a lot on shutting me down, and they've been pretty successful at doing that. I'm way behind here in the lane, but the good news is our own bottom lane is doing quite well. Our own bottom lane is ahead of their bottom lane. Unfortunately, now our bottom lane is getting caught out here again. Three of them coming bot. Oh, we do, do we have Sona ult up? Do we have Ash ult up? No Ash ult. We do have Sona ult up. Really probably need to use that here. There it is. Going to use that to freeze Varus Nox under the tower. Terror assist though. Oh, he's taking a lot of damage. He's going to get off the dunks. And is he going to survive? Yes, actually. Is going to survive. Trialborn whiffing on that Oriana ult. So no, unfortunately, not going to be able to score a kill. They really should have been able to pull at least one kill back there. But nope, not quite able to. They're going to be able to make it out. And Terrorist is going to be able to pull, what, one kill or two kills? I think he got at least one kill there. Again, Darius, very good at cleaning up the tail end of fights. I made a miscalculation. I thought I could get down to that fight in time to help out. I wasn't able to get down there in time to help out. So would have been had time better spent up here in top lane. Still... What do you do when you're behind? Well, you just look to try to keep farming, keep trying to get stronger. You don't want to go in and engage right here. It looks like we're going to be able to catch Trist, and that Ignite from Oriana is going to finish it off. Good job. So again, you want to keep looking to just farm lanes. You want to avoid fighting. You want to look to farm and get stronger. Like right now, I cannot win a fight against Terra Assist. I cannot beat their Darius 1v1. I want to avoid fighting him if at all possible, and just try to farm. Um, just want to try to kill this wave. Again, this is when that Darius Q is pretty nice. You can get uh, hit the entire wave, keep yanking it down. And by the way, note that I actually do pull the creep there. It's kind of funny. Just here, just trying to farm this wave and get stronger. And, uh, you know, just try to catch up the deficit. In terms of gold, I'm what? I'm over 1,000 gold behind. I'm about 1,200 gold behind. So all I can do is, like I said, avoid fighting him. Just try to push this. Uh, well, not try to push this lane. Just try to farm the creep wave. Unfortunately, I see Terra Assist right here, and that is bad news. Again, he's got Frozen Mallet. That's really bad, so he's going to slow on every one of his auto attacks. Realize right away that I'm not going to be able to get out of this, so I just have to turn and fight. Again, I'm trying to kite this, but I realize I can't can't win that and again that's what the frozen mallet does i cannot escape all of his auto attacks slow he's got what about 500 more health than i do 
Yes, he's got about 500 more health than I do, so there's nothing I can do. I cannot cannot beat him 1v1. If he catches me in the open field like that and he hits his pull, I am dead. Did not have flash up again. Remember, I used flash to escape that last fight, so unfortunately going to feed another kill to their Darius, and now it is 6-2 compared to 1-4, and you can just see how far behind I am. This is going to cost us our blue buff as well. Another nice play by Terrasis, taking advantage of the weakness of our team to go make a play and take that blue buff. So again, our team is in a lot of trouble. Again, in mid, we're actually losing mid as well. The one, the only saving grace is that Ruli Helian, despite being really far ahead, 403 compared to 1-5, he's chosen to go Archangel Staff first, and that's a really silly build. He should not have gone for Archangel Staff first. He should have gone on Walzahar, probably either build the Rod of Ages or just go double Doran Shrings into a Death Cap, one of the two. Something along those lines, but the, the Archangel Staff is is a rather poor purchase because he's sunk 3,000 gold into an item that's not really helping him that much. Mauls should not be having mana problems. Doesn't really need a tier. Uh, Archangel Staff Fine is sort of like a late game item, but I would not suggest rushing it first. Really though, the one who's controlling the game is Varus Nox. You might notice he's 405. He's gank been ganking lanes. He's got the Bone Tooth Necklace with eight stacks now. And he's really been putting the team ahead. If you notice, he put my lane ahead. He put Terra Assist ahead in top lane. He put uh, Ruli Hellion ahead in mid with some ganks in mid. The only lane where he hasn't been that effective is in bottom lane. Our bottom lane's ahead, but he has been down there a lot. Indeed, here he comes in again. Stealth gank. He's going to be able to run in, jumping immediately onto Ash. Got that red buff slow. Again, nice Sona ult. Going to try to be able to disengage. Here comes Mauls, though. And again, Varus just killing people left and right. There's another kill. Sona going to get ulted under the tower. And there's yet another kill for their team. So they're going to pick off another kill. And our team is looking to be in pretty bad shape right now. We are quite weak. They're going to take another tower. And yeah, we're, we're not doing very well right now. <laughs> we are in all kinds of trouble. And again, it's largely due to just how effective Varus has been. He is clearly the MVP of their team. And he's just been controlling the map. Now, one thing you might notice, I know, saw that Terrasist was up in top lane. I saw he had the blue buff. I was like, okay, I'm not fighting him. When he's in top lane, I'm going to go somewhere else on the map. I will only look to defend my tower. Uh, and that's sort of the modus operandi right now. I cannot beat him in a fight. If he catches me out away from a tower, I will die. So anytime he's in top lane farming, I will go somewhere else on the map and look to farm. Because I can't fight him 1v1. He will kill me. So I will just look to avoid fighting him, period. You might have noticed, I went all the way down here. I farmed wolves. Then I went here and farmed wraiths. And now the wolves are back up again. So I'm just looking to avoid him at all, if at all possible. See, like right now, he's mid. So, okay, he's mid. That means I can go top and farm. I'm going to go top and farm. Now, the downside is this frees up Terraces to go and make plays elsewhere on the map. See, I'm up here on top. I'm farming. I'm not helping the team. But this is something I have to do. I have to remain. I have to keep getting stronger. I have to farm. I have to continue getting minion kills, or I'm not going to be useful to the team. Note that I also picked up the Heart of Gold. That was, again, a reaction to losing the lane. I probably would skip Heart of Gold normally on Darius. Uh, the idea being on Darius, you want to build Doran's Wade. You want to get kills. You don't want to go Philosopher's Stone or Heart of Gold and get passive. Passive, passive gold generation, you want to get kills. So anyway, again, I'm just looking to avoid Darius whenever possible. I don't want to fight him. Wherever he is on the map, I'm going to go somewhere else. Because if we just stand and straight up fight, he will kill me. And he will kill me every single time. I cannot escape that frozen mallet. So um, again, just looking to try and farm, make myself useful to the team, and try to catch them in a mistake or an overextension somewhere. See, once again, Terrorist in top lane, farming these minions. Where am I? Not in top lane. <laughs> somewhere else on the map, not in top lane. I can't beat him. If I run out here, you know, like, let's say, if I try to run out here and farm the creep waves, he's just going to kill me. Like, it's as simple as that. I can't get away because of his frozen mount. He's just going to kill me. So I'm with the team. I'm trying to look to make some kind of play right here, trying to look to get something going. Varus is going to come a little bit far forward, but then we see these two coming down from top, and we're like, hey, we got a, We had a 5v3 briefly, but 5v3 times over. We got it back. We can't fight this. If we fight him in the open field, they will kill us. We are too far behind to win a matchup. And again, once again, going to use this time productively. Going to come in here. Going to try to farm the creep camp. Actually, Terrace just grabs a pull. He pulls one of the wraiths over the wall, but he didn't get the big wraith, and that's what matters. So... Uh, again, anytime you got free time, you're behind, just keep farming. Farm something, keep farming. Uh, I'm not really closing the gold gap with Terra Assist. I'm not closing the gold gap. He's still, what is it? He's still 1,500 gold ahead, but at least I'm not falling further behind. It's kind of the way that I'd look at this. And uh, at least I haven't died again. I mean, I've died four times. That's bad, but at least I haven't gotten, you know, like six or seven or eight deaths. And again, it's because 
I'm not fighting him. <laughs> Avoiding combat wherever possible. Here now, our team making a mistake, pushing too far forward. There's the dunk. Terrace is going to claim another 300 gold, so that's going to make things even tougher. Uh, Wizard Ninja going a little too far forward. Really, no business trying to push this tower unless the enemy team isn't there. So that's not what we want. Not what we want to do. Again, I'm just going to continue to farm whenever whenever their Darius is not here. Uh, want to push this lane, gonna, then going to have to try to come back here into mid. Right here, Terra Assist going to engage a little too deep, though. Everybody is going to survive Trowborn low, but not quite going to die. And again, that means we're going to be able to hold this tower. They probably should have just waited for Trist and Rengar to get there before they tried to push that. Anyway, I've got my own Frozen Mallet. Frozen Mallet's a very nice item on Darius. It's a good item to build for uh, early on. Just makes him very, very tanky and allows him to stick to people better with that, uh, what is it, the auto attack slows. So it's a really useful item to build on him, and it's one that I wanted to go for as well. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to start stacking some more armor. If you note their team, their team's very AD heavy. They have Darius, Rengar, and Trist doing most of their damage. I really wasn't that worried about Malzahar just because of this build was not a very effective build. So I'm going to look to stack some armor next. I'm going to try to go for that. I believe that Randuin's is the next item I'm going to go for just because no one on our team has it. Gives me armor, gives me health, and I've already got the Heart of Gold. So it feels like an effective item to be going for. Anyway, right here we see two of them coming in. We could maybe fight that, but maybe not too. And instead, we're going to disengage that fight right here, trying to make it out of here. Ash Arrow is going to be a pretty good Ash Arrow. It's going to allow us to disengage, but we really can't fight that. We did get the blue for Trialborn, or we did have it at least briefly, but Varus is going to jump in, and that blue buff gone all too soon. Now Wizard Ninja in trouble again. Trist Rocket Jump re resetting, cooling down on every, uh, on every one of the kills or assists and right here gonna get into trouble but their team's starting to go a little bit too deep right here i'm gonna go ahead and use my ult on volbast uh not gonna be enough to get the kill but their team continuing to dive terra assist continuing to go behind our tower for some reason he actually already has a guardian angel but this is just a silly mistake on his part really no reason to come in there uh i'm gonna get the kill there and that's gonna end a spree so that's a pretty big deal for us we end up actually going two for three, which is a pretty good exchange given how far behind we are. And again, their team continues to push on this tower. We just want to be able to hold this if at all possible. Trist just needs to poke at the tower. Right here, I'm gonna try to grab somebody if I can, let's see, just my pull off of cooldown. Uh, no, was still on cooldown. Apprehend was not off of cooldown, but still, we went two for three and, and that kind of helped us out quite a bit in that fight, um, just because we were able to get the end of those killing sprees. Again, Terrasis, his Guardian Angel, is now down off of cooldown. That was a, a bit of a waste. He, he just ran behind the tower, and uh, he did get a kill. He got a kill on one of our team, but I don't. I really don't think it was worth it. I think that if he had just backed out, they could have pushed this tower, and I think they could have gotten it. So instead, well, they dove a little bit too far. Now they are going to pick up Dragon on the back end of this, and they are still ahead by 8,000 gold, but... You never really want to give the other team a chance to sort of get back in it. Uh, and I also picked up blue for getting that kill. So that was a that was a situation where they could have backed out after the initial kill. They probably could have done Baron or at the very least taken mid tower. Instead, they didn't get mid tower, and uh, I was able to get a killing spree right there. So I got uh, close to 600 gold, and that's going to allow me to pick up Warden's Mill here. And like I said, this is a very good item against their team. The extra armor, the health regen, chance to slow, getting close to Randwins. And again, I'm starting to become much more useful to the team. And now I've got 170 armor. Oh, I'm still not as useful as their Darius. I'm still behind Terra Assist, but I'm starting to become more useful to the team. And I'm not completely useless, despite how far behind I am. Anyway, right here, we're going to look to catch their team. And note, Trist is not here. Trist is not with their team. So this is a great fight for us right now. We're going to lose Oriana, but the rest of us are still in the fight. And we were able to get a kill on Varus Nox's Rengar. I'm going to get exhausted, but I'm very tanky by this point in time. I'm going to look to start getting off those dunks. I just want to get Terrace's low. There we go. Then I'm going to get the kill and get the reset on my ult. So it does get back up again. Now we're looking to go after Lux. I'm going to hit the pull right there. And Lux is getting low. There's another dunk for the double kill. Soda ult coming out. And nope, couldn't quite get the triple kill right there. But we do pull off an A. And again, the whole fight set up by the fact that Trist was back at base. They should not have been fighting that. Team got caught too far forward. It was a 5v4 in our favor. They bursted down Oriana, but we were able to make the plays happen. And again, that Darius ult does cool down again every time you get a kill. So was able to use it twice in the fight. Narrowly missed getting a triple kill. And all of a sudden, we're, we're kind of back in this because this is going to be an easy Baron to take with their whole team dead. 
And now the game is suddenly back up in the air again. We're only down 2,000 gold. And uh, Ash is starting to scale better and better into the late game. We've got Ash Sona, which is a very good late game combination. Uh, of course, Trist is quite good in the late game too, but I've never been a huge fan of support Lux, just because I, I feel like you usually don't get enough uh, AP to be effective on Lux. Um, I mean, I have seen it work, but I'm, I'm, I feel like Sona scales much better as a support in the late game compared to, say, uh, say Lux. Anyway, Varus was coming over here, but we did spot him. He did walk past this ward right here, so kudos to whoever placed that ward down. Anyway, I'm going to go back to base. I'm going to grab my Randwin's Omen, and I'm going to then look to... Let's see, I'm not sure quite what item I'm going to build next here. Um, let's see. Okay, looks like I only have just enough gold to build Randwin's, or what am I going to build? Yeah, I don't really have enough to go for something else yet. I can't remember what it is. Oh, I believe I was going to go for Aegis next, just because no one on our team had built it. Aegis isn't really a core Darius item, but, I mean, you really want to have it on somebody. Uh, Lee Sin should have built Aegis instead of whatever it is that he's building right here. He's got pieces of a couple different items. Lee Sin really should have built Aegis instead of pieces of different items. Also, Ash... Come on, Bloodthirster Ash, come on, come on, uh, Ayatox. You need to build, need to build, um, need to build Infinity Edge on Ash. She's like the infinite, she's is like the definition of an Infinity Edge champ. Anyway, though, again, uh, gold being spent a little, a little suboptimally on the other team as well. The Archangel Staff into Haunting Guys. This is not a good Malzahard build. Again, he's not going to get a death cap until like the 40 minute mark right now, and that's going to limit his effectiveness. So anyway, we do have Baron, and we're going to look to push with this. We're going to look to try to catch someone out. We're trying to poke this tower down if we can get it, and Ayatox is going to do a nice job of poking down that tower. That's just what we want. There is the arrow with the initiation. Unfortunately, it hits Darius, not the target that we really want. Varus is going to pop his ult, but we do have an Oracle now, uh, although Trowborn is going to separate out from the rest of our team, and he is going to get very low. Are they going to burst him down? Yes, Lux Laser. Support Lux for the win. So we do now, uh, did now lose our AP mid, and unfortunately, Trowborn is actually... Uh, one and eight on the game, so not that great. Anyway, what that means is we don't want to fight, we don't want to make the same mistake that we just saw the other team make, we don't want to go into a 4v5, so we're just going to back, we're going to look to disengage. We did take Dragon off of that, Dragon just died. That was part of the reason why um, why we lost that death. Uh, Trowborn really just should have been with us, got split off, Varus popped his ult, ran in, instant kill. Again, don't want Rengar to, really don't want to let Rengar just uh, run in stealth and kill you. That's why we've got the Oracle. Stay close to whoever has the Oracle. Um, so anyway, uh, we're going to, uh, you know, disengage. We've still got a little, we've still got about, what, about a minute left of Baron. We can wait for Oriana to respawn, and now we can look to push while we still have Baron. Again, note what I'm doing, still farming, 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 farming. Never, never, never stop farming. And I'm actually ahead in CS over there, Darius, right now, because I've just been farming uh, so dutifully. But, um... Yeah, and I've actually caught up in gold. Again, as far behind as I was, I've actually managed to catch up in gold, uh, largely due to taking that Baron and getting a couple kills. But again, it just goes to show when you're behind, never stop farming. Just try to find opportunities. Try to see if the other team makes a mistake. And you can get back in it. You can be effective. And, you know, I, even though the KDA doesn't look that good, 4-4-3 against 9-4-1, I actually have just as much gold as Terrorist, although he does have his Guardian Angel back up. Okay, so again, our Baron's about to run out. If we can force a fight while we still have Baron, that would be great. We've got Ash Arrow for a potential initiation. We want to try to grab either Malzahar or Oriana, our, our top targets. Darius is too tanky. We don't really want to focus him. Anyway, I'm going to get ulted. That's a poor Malzahar ult. I am way too tanky. I should not be the one they're initiating on right here. So anyway, I'm going to tank a lot of tower damage, but they wasted a lot of cooldowns on me. And again, I'm pretty freaking tanky right now. I'm not the one they want to go after. I have 3,700 health, so that was a poor choice of his ult for Malzahar. Let's see what ults are down right now. Malzah's ult's down. Lux ult is down. That's not that significant, but we still have all, most of our ults up. Well, we have Sona ult down and Oriana ult down, so I guess it's about an even trade, but uh, the big difference right now is we have Sona heals. Again, we have a healer, and they do not, so sieging up this tower pretty good situation for us. Now, we've lost Baron regen. We don't get the health and mana regen, but I was telling the team in chat, I was like, look, let's just keep sieging this tower. We have Sona. That means we have heals. Like, we are slowly healing up because Sona is spamming that W over and over and over again, and they do not have a healer, so we can keep poking this tower. We have better sustain than they do. If we keep sieging up this tower, we will get them low, and we should be able to get this tower. Um, so this is a situation where the strategy uh, does come into play right now. Anyway, their team looking to engage right now. 
But uh, as it is, again, we can just look to disengage. We've got the Sona heals. ALRF has still got enough mana. Just, again, keep healing, healing. Note that we're almost all full health, while much of their team is below half. Again, this is the power of having Sona on your team. The healers tend to be a little bit weaker in lane, but they're great at sustaining pushes late game. So that, again, this is when I was like, no, 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 look, let's just stay here. Keep pushing, keep pushing. Note that Mauls has gone back to base. Trista's gone back to base. So now this is the wave where we want to make our move. We want to look to force this tower and we want to look to get it. And we do, in fact, get it. Unfortunately, unfortunately, Lee Sin disconnects. But hey, we got that tower. And again, that's that's where that's where the strategies come into play. We had the healer. That was one advantage we had. Their team didn't. Now, Dragon is respawned. We're heading towards Dragon. But I was like, look, look, look. Wait right here. Wait right here. Wait right here. Their team's going to come into the brush. And watch. Right here. I'll slow it down. We get the Ash Arrow initiation. We get the uh, Sona ult right there. We're going to pick off two kills. Their team is still funneling in one at a time. Uh, Trist gets low. She's not quite going to die. Maul's ult is not going to be enough right there. Again, we're just engaging, and now we're just going to clean up the fight. Getting low. There is the dunk by me, Darius. And now we're going to go in after Terra Assist. And wow, what a mistake that their team made. Just funneling in right there, getting caught, and then just all of our crowd control. Ash arrows, Sona ult being applied. And yeah, that's uh, that's just a terrible situation for them to fight. And oh, Ash is going to pick off the kill. Uh, scumbag Ash preventing me from getting another dunk. And that's an ace, and that's game, because there's no one left alive. No one can defend the base, and that means we're just going to win this game. So yeah, baiting the dragon. Again, we both knew dragon was up. We just stand in the brush right here, and they all walked in. And just alt, 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 Sona alt, Ash alt, Oriana alt hits their whole team. And they blew up instantly, and, and again, that's that's the game. Amazingly, we came, are able to come back, win this one. Their team's starting to revive, but we just need to sit on the Nexus. I'm just hitting the Nexus. I'm like, look, their team's reviving. Let's just finish this game. Just hit the Nexus. And there it goes. We're going to be able to win this one before the rest of their team revives. So, yeah, quite a turnaround in this game. Anyway, so I wanted to do this game because I wanted to highlight not just some Darius play. I, I also tend to think that mirror matches are kind of boring for the most part. You don't see them in ranked play, obviously. You only see them in a custom game like this or a normal game. But I wanted to highlight this game because I wanted to showcase not just Darius gameplay, but what to do when you fall behind. And uh, what that is, is if you're in a situation where you can't win 1v1, you just have to play defensively, you have to play more passively. Again, I, I tried to point out how whenever Darius was in top lane, whenever Terrasis was up here, I was somewhere else. I was farming wolves, I was farming wraiths, I was in mid, I was in bottom. And then when he left top, I would go to top and farm the lane. So I was just avoiding him because I knew that I could not beat him. And uh, amazingly, I actually had more gold at the end of the game. I mean, yeah, KDA is not as good, but, but I did have more gold. Um, I actually did have more gold at the end of the game. So a, a lot of interesting stuff in this game. Some mistakes on all sides. Some plays that could have been made better. Certainly on all sides. But uh, I, I was pretty happy with the ga this game just because I was able to get back in it. Anyway, kudos to both teams for playing this game. Hope everybody had fun. Uh, Varus had a really good Rengar game. I also could have used this video as a Rengar video. He played extremely well. But their team just made two really big mistakes. One diving too far past this tower. And then again, getting caught 4v5 in a Baron fight. And that snowballed the game, and then finally the last fight here, where they just got blown up, and that ended it. Anyway, once again, thanks for watching, thanks for listening, hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, a note about this week, I will try to do the Tuesday night game if I can. However, you may have heard the eastern coast of North America is getting hit by a huge hurricane right now, so there's a very good chance I'll be losing power. If I do have power, then I'll do the Tuesday night game. If you don't see me around... I probably am sitting in the dark. <laughs> so that's what's going on. Anyway, once again, hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Take care. See you soon.